Our first looks coverage is proudly powered by the Microsoft Store. Get your next laptop, tablet, Xbox, and more by going to firstlooks.tv slash Microsoft. The science of data transfer in general is interesting and being able to apply it to smart technologies, robots and things mm -hmm. like that on the ground is interesting, but being able to transfer data super long distances is even more interesting. <laughs> we have our next guest here, and this will make sense in a second. Hello. Hi. How are you doing today? Good. Speaking of robots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and long distances. Yes. Robots in space. <laughs> yes. Robots in space. <laughs> Go ahead and introduce yourself for us. So my name is Kurt Lloyd. I am a NASA engineer. I'm a software engineer for NASA. Uh, I've been working there for 27 years now, yeah, and going. Okay. Um, so uh, I came here to Robotic Roboticon this weekend to talk to the students about robots and Mars and uh, about engineering and job opportunities at NASA to get them excited about engineering. Robots cool. and Mars are my favorite two <laughs> subjects in the same sentence, <laughs> so I'm excited. You, you, mean, you mean the team right there? Mars? Yes, the Mars robot Fif team. 1523? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, uh, the student who was just on is going to want to talk to you <laughs> yeah. okay. later. I uh, right. told her to look for you. All she's right. in biomedical here at USF. And, oh, okay. she, and she's very interested in... Uh, I asked her what her dream job was, and she said, I would like to work for NASA one day, and I'm like... In, in research on uh, like long term space effects yeah. on oh. people on and body. stuff like that, mm -hmm. which is we definitely which need is huge right now. Work on that, so that's I, that's I, a big deal right now. I told her to make sure to connect with you. All right, <laughs> after I'll the keep interview. my eye open. <laughs> so, what kinds of stuff do you work on at NASA as a software engineer? Um, specifically, myself, I work in a group at NASA called SwampWorks, and. Uh, that's a, a nod to the uh, um, Skunk Works group. Okay. But uh, we are a uh, research um, group, and we're doing, like, forward thinking, out-of-the-box thinking. And we're a group at NASA that is focused on the technologies we're going to need um, in the future when we've got humans living on Mars, um, ex humans exploring Mars instead of just robots. Of course, when humans are exploring Mars, it's not a competition it's not humans or robots. It'll be humans and robots. Yeah. We'll need a lot of help from the robots um, when we're on Mars, just like we need help from robots so here on Earth. So you got to be nice Absolutely. to them, so that <laughs> yeah, they can be help. nice. To, <laughs> be nice to the robots. That's the lesson, kids. So, so we're not <laughs> we're, we're not them. talking about some sort of a Skynet scenario. <laughs> no, where we get there and the robots revolt. They're like, "This is our planet. Get off." <laughs> yeah, the idea is not to do that. <laughs> okay, the exact got opposite it. of that. Fantastic. <laughs> Because that, that seems like a bad idea. Oh, it yeah. So <laughs> totally cooperative idea. behavior seems way more useful. I appreciate all the sci-fi <laughs> telling us what not to do, you know. So that way we don't have to think about it. We're yeah. like, yeah. that, we're not going to do that. Not going to do it. Mm -hmm. so science fiction is just stories of what not to what do. What not to do. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Very, very few of them have, you know, happy, pleasant. Absolutely. You know, there's always something bad it's happening. Always, it's always they want a utopia, but it turns into a dystopia. And, <laughs> then, and then you're like, well, let's not do that. It's entertaining, I guess. <laughs> Indeed. It's, it's that conflict that makes a TV show or a movie interesting, but not so much uh, trying to build an actual colony yeah. on Mars. Mm -hmm. Probably you don't want that. Yeah. Well, our first uh, cruise that'll, that'll go to Mars will probably be a very small crew of like four, maybe six astronauts. Okay. But... They're still going to need a lot of infrastructure and a lot of resources there on Mars. Yep. And so um, a lot of groups at NASA, including the SwampWorks group that I work in, are thinking that far ahead. We're thinking 20, 30 years in advance and working. And we're doing research and development of new technologies. Um, one example of technology that uh, we think is going to be needed when humans are living on Mars is a way to use the local resources and create... Um, breathing air on Mars, for example. Another thing we can create on Mars is rocket fuel, which a lot of people, yeah. that kind of blows a lot of people's minds. But uh, there's water ice on Mars, right. and uh, water is hydrogen and oxygen, H2O. You know, chemistry kids, H2O. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that hydrogen and oxygen 
are rocket propellants. Mm -hmm. they're, the, they're the rocket propellants we use to launch the space shuttle right. you know, for 30 years. So it's a very popular rocket propellant. Another propellant we can make on Mars that's really cool is liquid methane. Um, and uh, we can get carbon dioxide from the Martian atmosphere and water from underneath the Martian soil, which is okay. in ice, frozen ice form. And using the magic of chemistry, chemistry again, <laughs> we, can, we can create uh, liquid methane, um, which is another great rocket fuel on Mars uh, that we could use on Mars. So that's, that's the sort of things, future thinking, that uh, a lot of NASA groups, including uh, the Swampworks group, are looking at um, uh, okay. and figuring out here on Earth if we can figure out how to uh, create those technologies um, and then get them closer and closer to something we can send to Mars someday. Sure. So that way you don't have to travel with all the fuel that you'll need perhaps to come back or to do whatever things you need to do around. Yeah. It you is, don't have to travel with all of it. It's Yeah, it's... it's uh, it takes a lot of energy and thus a lot of money to send things to Mars. Um, so we want to, if, if we want to be able to do a mission successfully using, you know, budget constraints that yeah. we're going to have in the next several, you know, um, years, we have to focus on what do we, what can we get away with not taking to Mars? Right. And so there's a lot of scientists looking at what resources on Mars, like the water and the carbon dioxide, and uh, we can save literally hundreds and hundreds of tons of things that we don't have to take to Mars if we right. can just make them there, like the rocket fuel, the breathing air for our astronauts, the water for our astronauts to drink. They right. can use the water to water their plants in their greenhouse. Um, there's uh, there's al also other resources that are there that NASA is working on figuring out how we can extract those resources. Sure. Find them, find the resources collect the resources, extract the resources, and then use the resources. So okay. it's an entire chain of events that has to happen. And there's a lot of, a lot of people at NASA that are working on little pieces of that, little links in that chain. So like the ability to, uh, to, to mine without having to bring the big thing that was in uh, Armageddon, for example. Yes, <laughs> yeah. And I'll be See? talking about Science that. Science fiction. That's, that's one of the talks I'll be giving while I'm here this weekend okay. is... Uh, I'm talking about you know robots on Mars, basically. But in that talk, I describe different technologies that NASA is working on um, to find, collect, excavate, um, transport, uh, process, and store and use resources that are on Mars. So it's a it's a pretty interesting talk. It, it really opens up uh, a lot of people's eyes when uh, when they find out all the all the things that NASA's researching uh, that we can use on Mars someday cuz it's it's not you know we kind of think it's we think of these other planets as kind of like a just a thing you know, not that they're complex like earth is oh. <laughs> you know we don't think about them yeah. as being complex it's just, it's Mars it's just a it's just a, a thing right yeah. it's just like floating out there cuz it was also <laughs> unattainable right and if you look at the pictures from Mars, from our robots, it uh -huh. looks like a it looks like a barren desert, you uh -huh. know, with well, just so rocks and dust. But you know, a lot of our sensors have found that there's um, frozen ice, you right. know, frozen water, underneath the surface. And the the top layer, the top several feet of the rocks and the dust, actually act as an insulative layer and kind of keep that ice frozen, frozen underneath there wow. and keeps it safe so that we can come use it later on. That's amazing. That's, that's our plan. Crazy. And you did briefly mention that like having like a greenhouse mm -hmm. on Mars. Like what is like the science behind actually growing like food and well, there are a lot other resources of that you not, would need. Probably not Biodome with Pauly Shore, since we're going <laughs> to keep <laughs> bringing up that. movies. Probably yes. not that idea. Speaking of science fiction, they showed us what not to do, right? <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so let's not do that. <laughs> Don't include Pauly Shore in poor, kind of anything. Poor Hollywood. They're getting a bad rap out of this interview, aren't they? <laughs> we're sorry, Hollywood. We love you. <laughs> you, make, you make good stories and warnings. You, you get us excited about space and Absolutely. science fiction. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, our idea uh, in NASA is to try and make science fiction science fact, okay. except for the bad stuff, sure. obviously. But there's a lot of different researchers and um, it, at NASA at various centers uh, working on how to grow plants in space, um, how to grow you know fruits and vegetables, 
things that, you know, can actually be ingested by the astronauts, eaten, and um, to uh, give them a little extra versus the, the, the dried food that yeah, they'll, that, that's that they'll come. be, that'll come with their spacecraft. Um, and no give them a freeze dried ice cream? Oh, it'll be, <laughs> it'll be there. Oh, no, okay. we're going to grow ice well, cream. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Somebody might invent it before we get there, you know. There's a lot of, we still got some time. But uh, they're working on, you know, do you need soil or can you grow plants in just a liquid, you know, and just have the right nutrients in that liquid. Um, And that's a whole other science, having it on a different planet with different... It is different environment. It is, and there are large groups at NASA that are that are working on that, um, biochemists and and things like that. People like that. Okay. So that first team that you said four to six people, what is the timeline for that idea? Well, um, it's hard to get NASA to give strict dates that uh-huh. far yeah. out because sure. our our budgets come you know one year at a time. But like a theoretical. But we yeah. do yeah. we do have uh, we do have some groups that think far out and do and do far out planning. And so the current plan is to uh, is to go to the moon first to go back to the moon. Because um, that's using, been a long time. Use, it, it's been a while, um, and some people think, well, we've been there. Why, why go back? But there's a, there's a lot of reasons to go back. When we went to the moon back in the 60s, uh, they were very, very short trips. They only spent a few days on the surface and only landed in, in a couple of different locations mm-hmm. on the surface, um, mostly near the equator. Mm-hmm. But once we have a large, a large rocket again, like the Space Launch System rocket uh-huh. that you may have heard about in the yep. news, and a uh, spacecraft that can, that can support astronaut crews for long-duration spaceflight, like our Orion spacecraft, you may have also heard about in the news, we Once those, we've got a good friend who's involved in it. <laughs> Very <bonsai>. Once those <laughs> are are you know developed and and working, we'll be able to use those to build a a smallish space station. Okay. But the but it won't be just in Earth orbit like the current space mm-hmm. station. It'll be in an orbit around the Earth and the Moon, and it'll be called the Gateway because it'll be a gateway to the Moon. And so we can. From there, we can kind of hop off and create a small uh, lunar colony, and oh. we'll be able to try a lot of these technologies that we want to eventually use on in Mars someday proximity. on the moon, where there's less risk uh-huh. and it's closer. Right. And so less communication, less time for travel, communica- less time to travel, and communication is quicker because communicating to Mars is about 20 minutes one way and 20 minutes back. So just getting a Hello, are you there? It's yes, like I'm there. Hour. It's like 40 minutes yeah. round wow. trip. So, wow. But, so if we can practice all these technologies on the moon and work the bugs out, sure. then and, and we need to make the give the astronauts uh, technology to help them uh, be self-sustaining and not be dependent on you know mission control back on Earth, at least not yeah. for real time things. And if we can practice that all the mo- all on the moon, and then uh, the next step is to go to Mars. So the idea is that we'll probably be able to get to the Mars in the 2030s, like maybe the late 2030s okay. or maybe early 2040s. But okay. we'll see. The, that's kind of a gray area. It's kind of not really set in stone. Sure. Until we get closer, we've got a right. uh, we've got some moon missions to uh, to try out first. I mean, when you really think about it, that time's not that far away. In the it's grand really scheme of things, yeah, that's it's really, really not. not that far. And when I talk to students, like the students that are competing here uh-huh. this weekend, um, I tell them, and I and I'm not joking when I tell them that that they are the perf- they are the right age. That when they graduate and and get a real job, they're gonna be the age that will be actually landing on landing and living on Mars. Um, <laughs> Or being back here on Earth, being the engineers that, and the support staff and mm-hmm. the mission controllers that are that are supporting the uh, the Mars mission crew, so they get really excited when I tell them that. And that was an aspect I hadn't <laughs> considered. That and the it's people who would be going on that trip would be children today. Yeah, they're our That's future. Crazy. They're our future, which is why uh, an event like this is so awesome. I didn't have something like this when I was their age. I mean. Not even close. <laughs> you right. know, we had science fair, uh, you know, which is great. Love science fair. <laughs> <laughs> and yet you're here but helping I, build the minds of the people that yeah, are probably yeah. going to be working. I this get really excited about events like this because I can 
I mean, they're already excited about robotics, obviously. Right. But I can get them excited about you Applying really can it, yeah. work for NASA someday or one of our contractors. You really can be an engineer. You know, engineering is just about problem solving. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these kids solve problems practically yep. every day. Right. And nobody calls it engineering. So it's, it's really great to talk to these students and at this age and get them excited about their future. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, having having uh, Barry, who is our uh, our state alumni director, yes, working working <laughs> on the project yeah. is really inspiring for them because they literally get to see somebody that mm -hmm. they know personally. Yeah. They mm -hmm. interact with at competitions. Mm -hmm. And know, they really look with, up to him, too. With a umbrella hat and stilts and, stilts. and all the crazy yeah. things that Barry does. And the yeah. jumpsuit. And knowing flight suit he will correct me i <laughs> will correct a jump suit <clears throat> he correct he has corrected me for years i will get to correct you <laughs> i'll keep calling it a jump no okay <laughs> to his face you're welcome barry <laughs> um well you know. he's he's at a game right now so <laughs> ucf game oh is that where he is yeah that's why he's not here never mind jumpsuit jumpsuit <laughs> <laughs> that'll teach but you to not be here yeah well but yeah you know getting to see him and knowing that he's involved in this mm -hmm. really inspires them oh, too yeah. because it's somebody that they've known for years they've yeah. always seen Barry That's great. being goofy and then mm -hmm. knowing that he's involved in the Orion oh, yeah. project being mm -hmm. able to pair those two things together and knowing all right well I'm a little goofy well that's <laughs> that's good that somebody like me is literally helping on the project yeah. Yeah. That will eventually put people on Mars. That they can see themselves so cool. in the future. And not yeah. even just doing that. He's also volunteering his free time to work at these events. Yeah. So that's yeah. also something for yeah. these kids to look forward to. It's for like, sure. hey, I can be in the industry and I can spend my time helping kids like me when I was back in yeah. First Robotics. Yeah. 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 You may have noticed that all three, the First Lego League, the First Tech Challenge, and the First Robotics Competition all have a space theme this year. Yes. And, and that's no accident. The first robotics competition will when the season starts in January. In January, when their season starts this year. Um, they've all got a space theme, and that's that's no accident. And Barry had a hand in that. Um, I had a hand in that. Several of my coworkers awesome. basically pitched what NASA was doing, including, you know, Barry told them about the Orion spacecraft. I told them about living off the land on Mars and using the resources on Mars. And, you know, we had a lot of different people telling the first organizers about all these different space aspects and they were able to compile that and create a, a season for all of the different age groups that is focused around space and uh, that's really exciting it's it's got the, the students all excited about space and and engineering and uh, more exposed to uh, what NASA's plans are for Mars yeah. for example so it's really exciting that's very cool so obviously your being here today and your interest in in participating in a roboticon is multi-tier you get to talk and get them excited about the things that you're working on yeah. and you get to inspire them that they could work for nasa that's the true things and they that could go to mars yeah the <laughs> things that they're doing are literally the things that nasa needs that's true not only am i talking to them about uh nasa's plans for mars and living off the land um, I've also got some of some of my sessions are specifically talking about um, NASA internships and nice. ways that they could, you know, how can you get a job at, at NASA? And so I'm actually logging on to on my computer and showing them how to how to apply for a, a NASA internship. So it's it's the website is intern.nasa.gov. By the way, you don't, in case you missed my talk. Um, so. Yeah, and then I'm um, just, you know, hanging out in the lobby and, and meeting them. You know, there's a meet a NASA engineer session nice. in a little bit, and they're going to just That's so cool. be able to just ask me any question they want to in the world. So this is, it's, I'm really excited to be here, and uh, it's really great We're excited to event. have you here, though. Yeah, for sure. I well, know that they're you. excited. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I think they are. We always like having people from NASA yeah. oh, come yeah. join us. Yeah. Because the conversations and, are always interesting, getting to hear... What you guys are working mm -hmm. on is and that's stuff we've always we have always been wanting. Growing up, we're always like, "Huh, what if?" And now the what ifs are being actually mm -hmm. yeah implemented, implemented, considered for yeah. real. And Definitely. NASA, as a government, as a federal agency, you know, 
we don't have like an advertising budget. We can't we can't create radio ads or TV ads. You know, like uh, you know um, a Boeing or a Lockheed Martin. Right. You know these private companies. Right. Can do and so, but what NASA can do, our workforce um, can we can go out and do outreach, um, which is you know what I'm doing here this Very this cool. weekend and. Um, all, all of the NASA employees are um, allowed and or or encouraged. If uh, a lot of them are, are really encouraged, especially the ones that show an aptitude for public speaking, uh -huh. um, and so uh, that's really how we get the word out is just uh, grassroots word of mouth. So that's cool. that's how we do it at NASA. Well, we appreciate you coming out to the event and talking to the kids and getting them excited. Sure. And we appreciate you coming and talking to us today. It's my pleasure. Thank me. Thank you for having <laughs> me on your show. It's Absolutely. been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. And Thanks enjoy the rest of the event. I will. Bye-bye.